Hello and welcome to Silent Hunter 5. We are currently in the U-boat pen in Memel, aboard U-31 of the second flotilla. And we're about to leave uh, for the Bay of Danzig in order to participate in the invasion of Poland in 1939. This is our watch crew here, Dito Epp, watch officer, as well as a bunch of... <coughs> We're standing on the tower, and this is the periscope here. UZO, uh, just, you know, uh, binoculars. Also with a com targeting computer and stuff. Sorry, not targeting computer, but torpedo control computer. And this is the hydrophone, which is what we'll use once we're underwater to detect enemy ships. At least I believe it is. And that, you can see it slowly rotating there, that little bar. That's also part of the hydrophone. Like that uh, little dinghy there at the front um before we get start really exploring this thing i actually want to sort of get it going so we're going to go look down here at the ui go to us. one speed ahead slow all voices are in german and a lot of different things like for example these flags have been changed uh because of the wolves of steel mod which i'm using which uh aims for a more uh sort of realistic simulatory nature of the game the game was already a simulator, but um, a lot of things, like for example the swastika, would not be in the game because of you know commercial reason reasons. Now, obviously, I would probably honestly prefer there not to be a swastika for YouTube reasons, and also because I mean, we can communicate the idea of the swastika without actually showing it, which I think Hotspot Four does a rather good job of with the vanilla flag, which is basically this flag except pull across. Yeah, let's, uh, so we, we've started going now, and uh, we're going to climb down, onto, not into the boat yet, we're saving that for later. We're going to climb down onto the deck. So this is the port of Memel. I'm going to open the map with M and uh, plot a course so that we don't run right into this uh, over here while I'm busy bullshitting. Yeah. There we go, so we're, we've uh, easily, like that, plotted a course that our crew will follow. So, I'm gonna zoom in here with my binoculars. So we've got a couple of other U-boats here in the port. Leaving the U-boat pen here. Very similar to the ones you see in, um... In, uh... Oh, what's it called? In a dust boot, if you watch that. Oh, there's a Lithuanian ship. So this is our deck gun. 8.8 centimeter deck gun. It's capable of sinking some shipping, so long as they don't have any guns to fire back with. <clears throat> this is the hydrophone uh, thingy I talked about. Don't even know what that is. Oh, and you can see the um, symbol of our flotilla, second flotilla. As well as some camouflage, which I actually I applied that in some sort of, sort of like in the customization that you can do in the beginning. Uh, so that's that was uh, yeah stuff that I customized. We started to turn. I kind of want a sharper turn, but yeah. Um, yeah. So this is the AA gun. All the way back here, we can hear the engine. We're gonna go down there into the engine room soon enough. I've actually never seen this before. I wonder what that is for, like, uh, another hatch. We might be able to see where it leads when we go inside. Oh, where's that ladder? There it is. Also a periscope over here. The uh, the U-boat has two periscopes. So this is inside the conning tower. This is the uh, basically battle stations for uh, the captain or whoever is manning the torpedo computer, which is this thing, which is where you essentially input all the data necessary for your torpedoes to hit their target. Quite an advanced thing. I believe it's just like a 
massive mechanical computer. We've got some uh, desk space necessary for, you know, necessary calculations. We've got champagne for when you hit your target. Phone so that you can call your friends and family as you're thinking. I'm joking, you can't because uh, we would need a phone line. And that would be absurd. I don't actually know what this is for. I think it might be to talk to people in other parts of the uh, U-boat. Anyways, this is the attack periscope. A bit framey. The game isn't very optimized, so I'm gonna hit. Um, oh, sorry, page up and page down is not this uh, periscope. Which there we go. Home and insert, or sorry, home and insert and delete on the keyboard raises the attack periscope. Page up and page down raises that periscope, the normal observation periscope. Yeah, this is the uh, interface of the attack periscope. A lot of useful, um, like measuring lines and stuff, as well as the uh, torpedo targeting computer there, and the settings for the torpedoes. Let's get off that thing. I believe it's going to lower itself automatically, and let's climb down again. So here we have most of the senior staff. Navigator, Emil Dubler. Executive officer, Erich von Dobbenecker. He's here because uh, he's young, so he's, but he's, he's here because of uh, connections to uh, the uh, general staff. He's quite a zealous believer in the uh, ideology and the cause, quote unquote, of the party. Chief engineer, Josef Erdmann. This is the guy who uh, sort of uh, controls the speed. You can see here, right and left engine at one speed. Klein, uh, kleine Fahrt. And then langsame Fahrt is uh, like sort of slow, but not as slow as right now. Then you got uh, halbe Fahrt and uh, große Fahrt and aus. Uh, Kraft, which is uh, flank speed, I believe. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how you see, like, this is essentially a tin can in which they've placed a, a floor and a bunch of desks and stuff and, like, a whole bunch of valves and equipment and just, like, a, a little bench for them to sit at. And, like, look at this. This isn't, like, a cockpit or anything for the guy who's actually controlling the direction we're going. It's just a bunch of stuff bolted onto a wall. Really hammers home the, uh, you know, the actual realities of this stuff, that submarines in World War II were basically death traps. And extremely, extremely cramped death traps. Let's go back into the rear of the uh, vessel first. Crew quarters with a bunch of food hanging off the ceiling. The kitchen. Olaf Heck, uh, Hecklander Bathrooms Engine compartment, diesel engine, chugin Motor officer uh, Willy Pels does not respect personal space And I believe this might be the electric engine which is currently charging when the diesel engine is going. So, uh, this section here is for senior staff. So this is the uh, radio station where the radio man sits, Wolfram Rabe. Now he's in charge of receiving messages mostly now. And you can see here, receiving a telegram. Uh, in the future, when we actually are outfitted with a radar, he will be in charge of the radar as well. But currently radar technology is quite, um, quite rudimentary. <coughs> He's also in charge of quite uh, possibly the most important aspect of the U-boat. No, it is not the Enigma machine, which we will get to play with later on once we get messages. No, it is the gramophone. 
we're going to deal with that later because right now we need some silence for something else i'm going to show off this is the captain's quarters which actually allow for some privacy you can lay down on the bed like this and chill this is probably how i'm going to end a lot of episodes and yeah we've got some pictures and stuff some uh books and those are some strange light switches i think might be uh, alarm switches i don't know so this is the hydrophone station or the sonar man station so sound man benno shoi and benno shoi or Sh show uh shoi i think is in charge of this machine the hydrophone and you can hear a lot of noise right now. We can rotate this around. You can, you can hear the nature of the sound change. If we rotate it back, it's going to get louder. The reason for that is that that is our own engine we're hearing. All of this is our own engine, in fact. Yeah, but if we dive deeper and if we turn off our engine, we can use that to listen for distant uh, vessels. Quarters for senior staff. Bathrooms, as well as torpedo storage. Torpedo men ready to load. Probably more champagne. Torpedo man, Kurt, uh, Kurt Faust. Kurt Faust. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Yep. Uh, staring right into my soul and yeah this is these are the torpedo tubes so you slap these into these For some reason there's a lot of pictures of Carl Donitz in this uh, submarine I think uh, I think that might be the mod creators mostly but yeah now I'm gonna show you the most important part Turn on the gramophone. Ja. Has it done it? Schiff in Sicht, Kurs 1, 6, 5. Oh. There we go. Ja, bitte, Herr Kaloin. Soll ich eine Schallplatte auflegen, Herr Kaloin? There's some water on our lens here. And by lens, I mean our eyes. Coming to the end of our uh, trip, or sorry, our uh, course here, so we're gonna plot some more. Take us out of uh, memo. Oh, we can hear the song. So, at this point, as we've gone through all the introductions and everything, I can speed up with time compression. It's going to look quite ridiculous right now. And I can talk a little bit, a bit about uh, how we're going to organize the structure of this series. So, I'm thinking that you'll be able to set t uh, sort of tell the, um, uh, the year and... Oh, we don't want to head in that on that course because we're going to crash right into that ship. Yeah, so uh, the idea is, uh, from the thumbnail and the title, you'll be able to tell the year, as well as the, um, the general sort of operation we're taking part in. So right now, I'm not going to put in uh, Invasion of Poland anywhere. We're, we'll just put 1939, because um, that's basically the only thing that's happening in 1939, and then the next uh, uh, time period of operations will be in 1940. And that will begin with the invasion of Norway, Operation Versorbung, uh, as well as uh, the invasion of France. Schiff in Sicht, Kurs 1, 9, 5. I'll probably change the thumbnail around so that we'll basically have like, there'll, there'll basically be seasons, I guess. Like uh, each, um, each new operation will basically be its own thing. So you can, if you don't enjoy a particular piece, piece of the... Uh, of the U-Boat um, campaign or the U-Boat warfare uh, stuff, you can maybe just skip one piece and then start anew on the next one. 
So imagining it as like seasons basically. And if we fulfill, like if we finish this game, if we finish the entire campaign uh, period, we will go through the North Sea, we'll raid off the coast of Spain, we'll raid in the Mediterranean, we'll probably raid near America, like the coast of, uh, like, sorry, the American coast, yeah, the East Coast of America as well. Provided, of course, we have uh, the fuel for that. As you can see, the uh, highest we can go on uh, time compression up here is 64. This is uh, the time. This is currently a nautical time. This is GMT. Greenwich uh, Mean Time, plus one, because that's our time zone. But we're going on nautical time right now, so... Because this, uh, our time zone is... Here we can see the crew, crew management. This is us, Friedrich Voigt. Metals, none yet. Subsystems of the U-boat, uh, which can all be damaged. You can see CO2 level, fuel level, battery level. We need to keep uh, uh, track of all this and, you know, refill and all that. Here we can see torpedo store. We'll save this electric torpedo for a special location if we need it. Let's see if we're out of range from ships. If we can't see ships, then we can go to 128. There we go. Now I can speed up. Time compression 512. This is going to get framey as hell. This is the message log. You can see here. Very detailed as well. As well as use the charts here. These are really good. So here we can have uh, harbor charts, which show us essentially the layout, uh, the layout of harbors. So this is Bergen in uh, Norway. Trondheim, Vannes, the airport for Trondheim, going all the way down here. Uh, maps here, minefield maps. Crick's Marine grid ma map, which tells us the air uh, range for various nations at various times of the war. We'll bring this up every time we want to get, get close to Britain and stuff like that. General grid tool, meant to help you whenever you get a grid reference. Lang uh, longitude, latitude, useful for navigating if we don't have uh, these... So that you can change, uh, or in the mod, I mean, uh, that basically removes your ability to see yourself on the map. And that makes it so that you actually don't know where you are in the world, and you have to navigate by landmarks and by the stars and everything else. And it's really cool, but I think it's a bit going to be a bit in too intense for this uh, playthrough. Maybe for a different uh, period of the campaign, maybe. We got a new radio message. Ship res uh, recognition here. Everything is in German. Trying to be as authentic as possible. Oh. We're approaching our final waypoint. Okay, cool. Uh, hydrophone and GRT instructions. This tells us how to use the hydrophone. Don't worry, I know a lot of this, and we don't necessarily need all of it, but this can be really useful for uh, identifying what a ship is by just listening to it. like sound cone width and all this stuff you can listen to try to listen to uh, uh, listen like w what kind of propeller it's got so you hear one two three chug one two three or sorry like chug 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 instead of chug 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 shit like that uh you'll you'll see once we get into it it's really cool Tri trigonometrics and shit it's the maths can get intense this is the upgrade chart for our submarine so that we are on v uh, sorry we are on 7a right yeah Oh no, we might be on 7B, or we might be on... We, we can't be on a Type 2. We gotta be on a Type uh, 7B then. Yeah, 
here's all these stuff that we could upgrade, snorkels and everything. We don't actually have a snorkel yet. If you need help with flags, because you sh like you can't ship, uh, or sorry, you can't sink uh, neutral shipping. That causes problems. So you gotta keep in mind um, enemy ships and stuff. However, <clears throat> a really big problem is that, for example, uh, you don't want to ship. Uh, you, sorry, you don't want to sink uh, German ships, right? Well, at a distance, this sea of red looks a lot like this sea of red here. And that becomes problematic and can sometimes lead us to sink German ships. Which, when it happens, will be hilarious. We have an order to uh, report uh, position and status, so let's do that. Go down here, find our communications officer. Report. Might actually have to go to him. Let's teleport to him. Hello. Send status report. Yeah, you can you can teleport and not actually have to go up manually. I'll do that sometimes in high stress situations. Otherwise, I'll you know go there myself. I'm gonna stay in the or up here for now. <clears throat> Just in case we need to dive. So this is the area of operations. This is where we want to intercept slash report the ta the Polish task force. So let's go that way. Let us mark down uh, the area of operations here. Oops, that's the wrong tool. There we go. Then we can see it at all times. So we want to stay in here. Uh, technically, I don't think the invasion has begun yet, and sometimes the um, the events of the game actually don't proceed proceed exactly as historically, uh, like as it does historically. So sometimes, for example, the invasion by, of Poland can be a couple of days late. <clears throat> this was the case with a lot of the stuff that happened in Norway, because I basically know the sequence of that kind of by heart. And when I sort of expected certain things to happen, like for example, I was looking for the British uh, Navy or who was going to be spotting the German Navy as it go goes like up the, um, the, well, the, the, uh, yeah, as it goes up this, uh, the coast here. And I couldn't find it. And also like the British, um, carrier and all that. Forget their names, but there were, the, like the entire British uh, Navy is basically based over here in this gap of flow. And some of them, went up this way, and I was looking for them in a different campaign. Yeah, usually when you spot a ship in this, it is a uh, one-to-one one in correlation to a real-life ship. Oh, there is a warship. Heading, let's see. Here's what you do. Mark the back, mark the front. We can see them, which means they can possibly see us as well. So let's go a bit lower. They're veering off. Looks like they're changing course. Yeah, they are. They might have seen us. See, where are they from us? Wrong tool again. 23 degrees, so this should be over here. Very foggy. I think I saw them. Oh, I might be hallucinating. Either way, let's uh, let's dive. And while they possibly aren't looking for us, let's talk to our 
uh, sorry, our soundman. No, a raider, man. But where do you get the... Oh, well, first of all, let's... Stop the gramophone for now. We don't know if this is an enemy or a friendly ship. I forget who you ask for depth under keel. Him. So he's going to talk to our sonar guy. They're going to send a sonar ping down to the... Uh, basically the... the um, oh, what's it called? To the, the, the depths of the sea, basically. And when it bounces back, we'll know how deep we are. It is. And it is 134. <coughs> plenty of maneuver... Or plenty of space to maneuver. Uh, this is the sort of gross, uh, um, I guess, um, estimate of where these guys are based on these sound contacts. So we're going to keep heading the way we're going, like this. We're not meant to engage them, we're meant to report on them. So we probably won't engage them, but if we report on them, our air, like our air power is going to bomb them. I want to do this though. Come to halt. Machine stop. Mostly doing this so that you guys can hear what this sounds like. Because we now we have warships. You can hear it. Listen to this. There. This is ambient noise. And there you go. You also see it here, contact. So, it occupies 120 degrees to 210 degrees. So 10 degrees. It's on 312 degrees exactly. Nothing. That's probably two contacts then. Because uh, one contact wouldn't occupy that wide of a band, I don't think. That's bo both of those ships that we hear. You can hear the uh, the rhythm as well, like the dun 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 dun. But now we should know what a destroyer sounds like, because I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Gotta see it here. I do love how it, like, you can see the U-boat here underwater. So it was on 310 degrees. find that hard to believe. Yeah, because this is to our right, right? It should be on our left. It should be over here, 20 to 30. That's not it, is it? No. I see something in the water. See that? Like, right on this. Just pass through the line. There's something over there. Oh, I think I see them. Nope. This is, uh, this is the game. Pixel hunting. Yeah, we're too far away to see them. There's something over there, though. At surface. Go 
we need to wait until we're actually surfaced before we can go out. We can do this though. Hit F2 and go. That look doesn't look uh, weird at all. And go external view. Technically, this is cheating, but I won't use it for that. It's basically just for production value, so that I can, you know, help you guys have some cool cinematic angles like this. There they are, I think. I think that's a smoke, I think. See? Maybe. I thought I saw, like, uh, small wisps of smoke. Yep. Let's report contacts. We're not going to listen to the radio. We're going to report contacts. Captain's log. Nope. We probably have to go down to him. Wait, no, we shouldn't have to. Should be a um, contact report thing, right? Report. Report on nearest contact. No sound contact or the contact is too faint. Oh, no, no he's reporting to me. Yeah, we'll have to go down. Send contact report. So he, now he tells command where those ships are, which means that planes will know where they are and they'll come and hunt for them. Or not. The contact is too faint. How come? I'm servicing fully because you can't actually use the um, normal binoculars if you're slightly uh, like below the surface, which is kind of stupid. There we go. Laufen auf beiden Dieselmaschinen. Yeah. Game is a lot of this. Laufen auf beiden Dieselmaschinen. Fahrt bei dem Wetter eins vier. Also, for the future, in terms of structure for these videos, uh, uh, I'll probably be like I'll probably not be recording until we meet something if we're on long patrols, because those just take a long time. So I'll basically have the game running, and I'll you know be patrolling, and then once I see the game slow down because we get a contact report, I'll start recording and I'll tell you what's happening and you know show you where we are and all that. That way, you don't have to watch just a bunch of bullshit. Closing tube one, apparently, so I accidentally hit uh, comma. I, we did not have an open tube, like torpedo tube. But who are these guys then? They might not be, um, so they're warships. I know this because of the, uh, well, it says warship there, but because of the contact symbol here. They should be going in front of our boat soon. Have a look at the horizon, see if you see anything. I think it's all this fog that's like messing us up. Maybe a bit later in the day we'll be able to see them better. You can see the smoke just barely. Don't see the other one though. There's at least one there. Dude, this dude spotted them from miles away. He's got fucking eagle eyes. Now, surely. Oh, they're turning. They're turning away from me. They've seen me as well. Why are the warships trying to escape me? 
Well, they might not be. They might actually be uh, separating in order to, uh, I assume, sort of like a hunter-killer formation. Let's uh, dive. Well, actually, let's, because uh, we moved a little bit, let's get a new death report. Important to do this before you get way too, way too close, because uh, they can use this sonar ping to, uh, to sort of um, home in on your location. 160 meters, well enough. Try to send that contact report now. Alright, well, we are past the 30 minute mark by quite a lot, so that should make it for this video. Or make it be it for this video, I guess. And uh, in the next video, we'll sort of deal with those warships. We'll actually try to follow them and try to see if we can't potentially sink one if, it, if they are Polish. They're acting strangely, so I'm assuming they're Polish. They came from... I don't know, they're, they're like... They came from what looks like uh, Danzig, like German territory, but they're being a bit weird. They might not have identified us as friendly if they are German, and we might not have identified them as German, so that's possibly... Oh! Warship, another one. Before we lose contact, I'm gonna mark it. Yeah, they might just... Uh, we, we might all be like very skeeved out by each other here. But yeah, we'll deal with all these warships in the next episode. Possibly sink one. I've sunk a couple of destroyers in this game but it's every time it's a challenge and it's very exciting because they retaliate closing oh boy slow down all right well thank you for watching uh, if you're interested you can reach me on social media in the description down below if you want to support me you can support me on patreon and uh, if this game is on Humble Bundle, I actually did not check, and I keep forgetting to do this kind of thing. What, what are you looking at? Uh, yeah, so if this game is on Humble Bundle, then um, there's going to be a link in the description where you can buy it from them. And I will get a small cut or a kickback from uh, you buying it with that link. And you'll also support charity and be buying it from a very, very reputable and ethical source. You'll also get a Steam key, I think, but generally you don't even need a Steam key with this game. There's no Steam Workshop, and modding is complicated as hell. There's also going to be a link to the uh, Worlds of Steel mod pack in the des description down below if you want to check it out. Other than that, I don't, I don't think there's anything else to say. Oh no, there is. Discord. If you're interested in reaching out to me, or if you want to stay abreast of what's happening with the channel, uh, the best ways to do that are with Twitter or Discord. The Discord link is in the des description down below, and uh, we have a small community going there. That's it. Finally, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.